Yeah, 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 no problem. You want to plug into the thing? Yeah, yeah, I can. John, are you going to Eric's talk? Huh? Are you going to Eric's talk next? Um, yeah, why not? I don't know what's up. I think I should get something else. Yeah, it's upstairs.
So one major goal is to try to see if we can actually get some of those folks to participate uh, on Wikipedia. And we'll talk about some ways uh, that we might be able to do that. Um, now, you have a, a different problem as far as active editors are concerned. Uh, so we have, we're very lucky to have 80,000 active editors, which is actually a considerable number for a civic media site. Um, but the, um, the growth curve uh, that you would normally expect for an internet site is just not there. Uh, we've uh, managed to reverse the decline by and large uh, that occurred a few years ago, but it's currently very flat. Uh, and you would not expect to see that on a website the size of Wikipedia. So it's uh, still a very serious concern to try to see uh, how can you get more active editors. Uh, some of the peaks that you observe there are from comments that typically occur when there's a Wiki Loves Monument uh, campaign. Uh, so for a period of time, you can get people very engaged, uh, but then the contest is over and they go back to their lives. And we're not able to sustain uh, continued activity. Uh, although Commons is probably growing faster than most of our sites, um, the, the, there probably needs to be more than just these once a year uh, Wikiloves Monument contests to really grow things. So um, at the Wikimedia Foundation, we've uh, tried a variety of engagement tools, uh, each of them aimed at a different user group. Um, so you, you have some that are very focused on one particular user group, and you have some that actually uh, address the needs of many users. So the visual editor uh, you know, has the potential to serve everybody. Uh, although you know, the uh, initial impetus for the visual editor was uh, a, little bit, a little bit more on the left of this uh, chart, you know, trying to get the, the, the new users to participate. Um, it benefits everybody. Uh, and you know, once uh, we add more and more of the great features, uh, uh, you know, we, the hope is that it'll help everybody else. Similarly, notifications also helps anybody who has registered. Um, you have to be registered to get notifications. Uh, discussions, the flow project that's just now starting, also has the potential and, and should be able to serve a lot of folks. And same with the global profile, mobile and multimedia. But at the bottom of the, um, of the chart, you see that there are some projects that appeal to particular user groups. Article feedback was a, is an experiment. Uh, in trying to get readers uh, to become editors. So it tends to be on the left of the chart. Account creation, obviously, along with the getting started program is on the left. Tea House starts when people actually have done a few edits and can then pose questions. Page curation was another project that we did that really appealed more to the power users, particularly controllers. And in the uh, coming years, we hope to work on a variety of wiki project tools that might appeal to very advanced uh, users. So um, there are a lot of different ways to engage people, a lot of different tools. And it's not just the uh, uh, foundation's tools, it's also tools that are created by others. Um, so for example, uh, edit, the AIQ is a program from the French Wikipedia, uh, which is spearheaded by Benoit Evelin this year. Uh, and uh, uh, Wiki Loves Monument is also a community-driven uh, pro uh, project. So what I'd like to do is just quickly go through some of these projects, look at them as examples of engagement and start thinking of um, how does each of these programs help engage uh, users, each in their different way. Um, so let's start with Ed et Ecole, uh, which basically means help and welcome in French. Um, this is a program that basically provides a lot of helpful tips presented in a, in a, in a simple way that's uh, very focused on the needs of the users and ask them, what would you like to do? Would you like to... Uh, uh, check out content, would you like to uh, point an error? Um, and for each of uh, the motivations that the user has, it provides some very simple tips on how to get started. And uh, the uh, general observation is that this particular program has been extremely helpful uh, and has helped make the French Wikipedia uh, new users much more, it's easier for them to get oriented. It's almost like giving them a little compass. Um, similarly, the Tea House on the English Wikipedia has provided a friendly place to help new editors become more accustomed to Wikipedia. And it's typically done in the form of questions and answers. So you go in, you pose a question, and one of the friendly hosts will answer it for you. Um, this one uh, you know, has uh, definitely uh, provided a, a safe space for people to go in and ask questions without fearing 
retribution. And it's uh, actually interesting to note that many more women uh, are active on the tea house than on uh, other types of discussion pages. And in many ways, it's due to the fact that it's such a welcoming environment. And uh, a lot of what makes uh, this happen is the hosts that are involved in this program. Um, you've heard about the Get Started program, uh, which uh, Stephen Walling and the E3 team have been working on. Uh, there's another example where uh, we provide simple tips on uh, how to uh, contribute uh, productively, and that helps you uh, kind of find a way to contribute to the movement as a whole. And we've observed that programs like these can increase uh, the number of active editors uh, by a couple percentage points, and as the program improves, we expect there will be more of it. And this is pretty significant because these folks might not have edited at all if they had not participated in this program. So what do these uh, new user programs have in common, and why do they work? The first thing is that they make you feel welcome. They're clean, well-lighted spaces where you say, hey, this is kind of a nice place. I'd like to hang out there. I'd like to go there whenever I have a question, whenever I need help. They all have a clean design. They provide helpful tips. And very importantly, they're often uh, manned by friendly hosts, at least in the case of Eddie Eka and the Tea House. And these hosts have active leaders that keep motivating the hosts and, and encouraging them to uh, respond and participate. And uh, so this human element is really important. And without it, you probably would not have the same quality results that you have today. Um, and then last but not least, they focus on the user's needs. They start with the user's needs as opposed to starting with a policy or starting with some you know, uh, things that are not necessarily user driven. And then the um, probably most important uh, thing that they accomplish is that they make it easy and joyful to find things to do. And this is a statement by Phoebe uh, Ayers. Uh, last year I was going around and asking people, what is one thing that we could do to improve Wikipedia? Uh, and this kind of recommendation was given over and over again. And I'm happy to see that some of these new programs are now making it possible for us to help people find something useful to do. And that seems to be probably the most important thing we can do to get these new users involved. Now, another program that we tried uh, was uh, the article feedback experiment. Article feedback was asking folks to help improve this page. At the bottom of a typical article page, you would find this thing that you see here at the top. Uh, did you find what you were looking for, yes or no? And after you click yes, you get a, another little screen that says, great, any suggestions for improvement? And basically focusing the users on recommending ways that we could make the, um, uh, the article better. Uh, and then people are invited to post their feedback. And then the third screen that appears is an invitation if they're a new user to join the community. You basically create a new account um, and log in. And from the standpoint of readers, this program appears to be pretty effective. Um, basically, the readers give suggestions, um, and they go on the feedback page over there. And the editors can make improvements based on that. You have many, many, many readers who simply don't feel comfortable editing right away but want to contribute something. And so it provides them with an easy way to make that suggestion. And more experienced editors can, if they want to, take advantage of the suggestions. But more importantly, once you've made that first step of posting a little feedback uh, comment, you become a little bit more comfortable. And the next time that you contribute, you could actually become uh, an editor yourself, or at the very least become a member. And then we can engage you through other engagement programs. Um, so the results of that program were, you know, almost a million feedback posts from the three pilots on the English, French, and uh, German Wikipedia. About 2.7% of invited readers created a new account, which is significant. About 3% of invited readers completed an edit. 70% of survey respondents liked the tool. They, they, you can see just from the volume of comments that this is something that people uh, actually enjoy having. Um, the amount of feedback that is actually useful, that's actionable, is on average about 12%, which doesn't seem like a lot, but you know, when you're talking about comments on the web, that's often the case that uh, many of the comments are not necessarily actionable. Uh, but the bigger issue was that uh, editors 
um, you know, feel like they have to moderate the comments, and that moderation creates more work for them. So although it has some clear uh, reader benefits, and it does engage the readers, it puts more work on the editors. And so for that reason, we've uh, only deployed this tool on a limited experimental basis, um, on an opt-in basis on the English Wikipedia. If you want to get feedback for your article, you can enable it, uh, but we're not putting it everywhere because we don't want to increase the workload. However, this type of program shows uh, some potential in terms of engaging the readers if we could address the, uh, the, the moderation issue down the line. Another program is notifications. Uh, this is something that we just deployed three months ago on the English Wikipedia. We started to roll it out on a variety of other uh, sites. Uh, and there's a variety of notifications when someone leaves you a message, when someone mentions your name, or someone thanks you, someone reviews your page, uh, someone links to a page that you started, someone reverse your edit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you can see what these notifications look like. Those of you who participate on the English Wikipedia have probably already seen it. Uh, when uh, some activity that's relevant to you takes place, a little badge lights up, you click on the badge and it will fly up. And you can click on any of these in order to take action uh, with uh, respect to the event that just occurred. Um, and uh, the breakdown of notifications by category is that uh, right now we're serving a lot of welcome and get started notifications. We're serving a lot of top page messages, page reviews, page links, and, and, and similar um, uh, events, but we're also seeing the rise of these new kinds of uh, social notifications, like mentions. It's uh, really cool that when you're posting a comment on a discussion page, to basically put the user's name in between brackets, and then they'll get a little ping that uh, there's a notification of the talk page. It's a great way to bring them to that talk page. There's no real good mechanism to do that uh, uh, with, the, with the current system. And then the thanks notification, which shows a lot of promise. Essentially, the way that the thanks notification works is, um, let's say that uh, I'm a new editor, I've just made an edit, and a current editor comes in and sees my edit on the history page, they now have a little thanks button right next to the undo button that basically sends a little thank you uh, notification to that uh, user to uh, show your appreciation. So it's a really nice form of micro-gratitude which uh, apparently, uh, as far as we can tell from the response from the folks who have been using it, it's just a wonderful way to just say, hey, nicely done, without having to go and type a long message which takes time. And right now, the indications are that uh, uh, this type of um, uh, engagement tool is, 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 is useful, and we hope that we'll see these percentages increase over time, and that the, the percentage of thanks notification on the site may, in fact, turn out to be an indication of uh, the amount of civility that takes place on that site, at least that's what we hope. Um, so this is an example of an engagement loop where you get thanked, you uh, perhaps start a collaboration with the person who thanked you, uh, you get motivated to make another contribution, you get thanked again, you start another contribution. So it really has very beneficial um, outcomes uh, in, in terms of uh, engagement, and yet it's a very simple little feature uh, without a lot of uh, sort of uh, complex uh, uh, development requirements. Uh, next up is discussions. Uh, so discussions are the essence of collaboration. Uh, and we're starting a project called Flow, which uh, you may be aware of, that will help uh, make discussion page, pages easier. We're finding from our research that talk pages are pretty difficult to use uh, for a new user. If they look at the talk pages, they have no idea how to contribute. Um, and so as a result, uh, they're fairly low traffic in terms of the bulk of the people who come to Wikipedia and not use a lot. Um, so what I'd like to do is show a couple examples, uh, or at least one example of um, discussion workflow. In this case, a content collaboration. Uh, so the goal here is to help another user improve an article. We've got two users, Jane and Paul, and they go through a series of steps where Jane you know, goes to someone's page and says she needs help. Uh, and then uh, Paul, uh, in this case, is uh, the person who she hopes will help her out. Um, the, uh, she posts a message on that page and she gets a comment back that uh, you, know, you can find out a little bit more information on how to edit. Um, then uh, she asks for more specific help and <coughs> the experienced user uh, contributes. So this is a fairly simple workflow, um, but the um, 
uh, importance of making that workflow more effective is very key to helping people uh, collaborate better on Wikipedia. Um, and again, the engagement group in this case, if you ask a question, you get a response and start a collaboration. Um, and ideally, basically through a series of questions and responses, you know, really heighten the value of that collaboration. So Flow is the next project that we're starting that uh, will encourage people to use this new collaboration uh, system so we can better communicate and interact with each other. Um, and uh, really very hopeful for that uh, program. We don't have a lot of data on it because we're just getting it started. Uh, but it's really one of the most important engagement tools that we're going to be working on in the coming years. And then lastly, I'd like to talk a little bit about Wiki Loves Monuments. You saw how um, effective Wiki Loves Monuments was in engaging users during the contest, which happened every year. Um, and I wanted to reflect a little bit on why Wiki Loves Monuments appears so engaging. Um, first, taking pictures is fun, and it happens to be useful. Um, you have a lot of creative uh, freedom. You don't have to worry so much that someone's going to revert that contribution. In some cases, they will revert it, but in many cases, um, uh, you will be okay. And at least during the, uh, the composition of the, the picture, you've got a certain amount of, uh, uh, of freedom. Um, it offers you a very simple task that can be done quickly. Um, it gives you an opportunity to act locally and yet be part of a global movement. Um, in some cases, you get to meet other people face to face. So it's not just a virtual activity. It's something that takes place in the real world. You can compete with other folks in contests, which is kind of fun for people who like to compete. And then you can share the work with your friends. You can actually say, hey, go look at this photo that I just took. Someone used it in an article. It's very easy for people to see the results of your work, whereas an edit is not so clear. You can say, I added that page. So they don't know which of uh, those things you've added. Um, so these are some thoughts about uh, what seems to make this, uh, this uh, particular program effective. Um, so we've looked at a range of tools. And I wanted to you know, quickly reflect on you know, some of the benefits of these different tools. They seem to range from sort of personal uh, benefits to more social benefits. So in some cases, you're getting personal fulfillment or uh, you get a sense that you're doing work that's important. Um, and then you also get a sense of belonging, of being part of a larger movement. Uh, other tools give you positive feedback that make you feel good about participating. And yet other tools will support online collaborations and in some cases face-to-face -face interactions, which you know, is still a very effective way uh, for humans to actually work with each other. So um, which of these tools is most effective for each user group is something that we're still you know, learning and uh, uh, experimenting with through the various tools that we're working on. But now I'd like to turn the discussion back to you and <clears throat> ask you the question, how do you think, having seen all these different types of engagement pro programs, how do you think we can get more people engaged on Wikipedia? And what software tools can we build to support productive participation? What are your thoughts um, above and beyond these early observations that I gave you on um, how we can increase the uh, amount of engagement on Wikipedia? Thoughts? You might not be able to hear me under the air conditioning. Yeah, uh, yeah speak loudly. Okay. Um, what I'd like to see is when a, a reader clicks edit on an article, the next thing that they are presented with takes them easily and effortlessly into what's needed to do a successful edit. Presently, when a new or a reader clicks edit, they're faced with a very complicated arrangement for one thing lots of weird messages, that some of which would be somewhat difficult to understand perhaps, most of them completely unnecessary to doing, you know, to correcting a spelling error or changing a fact, right? So I, I think what you're doing is great and I really think you should be applauded for it. But I do think we need to pay much more attention to that initial moment when they click edit. Cool. Thank you. But what? It's really funny because there's three questions. You know, 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 you
Are you talking about just the edit itself or the entire process Maybe of it, watching the page and getting, you know, what to do? That should be a video or something. No, I mean, just this, the small break, run through how to edit and how to uh, hold in editing environment works for the user. Yeah. yeah, I think we're really fixing that though with visual editors. So if someone is coming and making an edit for the first time, it's likely going to be a small text change. And I think that you don't need a demo for that. I think, I, I think that if you need a demo to, sh to explain how the hell to change one word, then it's a deeper problem with the software. And that's what the, the visual editor addresses. Okay. Um, but, but, but the point is well taken that you, you could be taken to a safe space where you could use the visual editor just kind of like in a draft mode, uh, that perhaps uh, you wouldn't feel so queasy about possibly uh, destroying something. something. Yeah. yeah, so maybe calling attention, maybe that's part of the, the, the demo. It's, it's first practice in your user space. Uh, and, and then when you're ready to make it. I mean, you're not punished for what you do. Yeah, That's yeah. A point. Because most of the time, you use a card and do something, and everybody say, oh, you break that, or you break that, and it's just reverted, so they had a bad feeling. Yeah, that. I think there's so much more to editing Wikipedia than just the mechanics of actually typing the word and hitting save. It's all about 
how to make sure you're not doing anything against policy yeah. or not doing anything that's stepping on somebody's toes. And a demo might help for that. And basically a well-designed um, uh, little, little guided tour kind of thing. You just say, okay, try this, try that. And then you don't have to worry that you're going to break anything. And so far, just sending them to the sandbox has been a pretty horrific experience. Um, and by the way, I also want to take the opportunity uh, to say that I'm sorry I didn't spend time talking with the visual editor in this presentation, but of course, the fine. visual editor, it, it, because I'm not uh, as familiar with it as the other projects that I talked about, but it, in itself, it's an incredible editor and beautiful tool. And I want to thank all of you guys on the team for making this tool possible. Uh, so, just because it wasn't in the presentation doesn't mean that I don't think it's important. So, one other idea for engagement is think outside of, of just writing long form content. There are some people that excel at doing that. They can sit down and write an entire article about you know, the burger joint by their house that's notable. Um, but consider other types of contributions and partial contributions. Uh, consider how someone can just uh, you know, start, start roughing out a sentence or start a draft of an article and, and can it be saved for later for someone else to contribute to? How you have a question? Yeah, well, uh, I wanted to add to what was commented before. Uh, for example, in the one of the one of the ideas uh, for the for getting started is is quite similar to what you are you were commenting. So new users get proposed some uh, easy articles which. Uh, were identified as having uh, spelling problems, so it's an easy task that they do. They probably do not get into problems, and when they go there, there are some ideas for guiding them. And also, uh, I think that in the near future, they will be experimenting with kind of having a progress bar. Then, if you complete that, you can get to more advanced. So you get marks or something. I don't know. You, you can get to, at least to get to more advanced. Uh, oh, any final comments or questions before we wrap up? From there? So I think we need to do a better job incorporating the tools we already had, like some videos. We have some nice help tutorial videos, but they are not available on most or in any welcome messages. If you want to watch a Wikipedia help video, you have to click to several pages to even realize there are videos. So I think we have a lost opportunity here. We should incorporate those videos. Right from the welcome messages. And as far as details go, I think we should create one more video. One or two will be saying, I, my career benefited because I learned at Wikipedia. I got the job because I learned at Wikipedia. It may not be very common examples, but I'm sure with our million user community, we can find some nice examples that will also play on people's uh, self motivation. Well, I can improve my life if I start at Wikipedia. So let's also mm. add very of this angle. Good idea, thank you. That, that's something we are, we will make on um, French Wikipedia. Unfortunately, I would like to introduce this video and uh, this new user page uh, for many other people next year. Next year yeah. But I think the point is well taken, is one that you made earlier too, uh, Benoit, is that it's probably key to start by looking at what are the things that really matter to the user, focus on the user's needs. Start with the user's needs rather than saying, let me start with how Wikipedia works or how this tool works. Because until they perceive this as matching one of their needs, they're just going to glaze over and not spend the time necessarily to watch something that's about our site. It needs to be about them and finding some kind of a way to you know, say, hey, what are you, uh, what are you uh, interested in? What are some of the things that you need? And then showing them a concrete benefit. Uh, that would hopefully engage them to participate deeply. Cool. Well, listen, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, look forward to engaging many more users on Wikipedia in the years to come.
Oh, hello. Yeah. Yeah, just about. Um, I was actually working on, because I worked at Wikia for six years. Um, and <clears throat> when we started thinking about visual editing, um, the foundation guys started to work. Here, we can walk some more. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, the foundation guys were starting to work on a visual editor. It was very early. Once they got their approach, they were going to do this synthetic editing surface, one of the box where it doesn't really use the markup of the real box.